hello, my name is Paddy. I live in Bristol in the United Kingdom. Today I'm going to talk a bit about automation in a digital audio workstation. I'm using a program called Reaper. I'm going to talk about automating effect sends and effect parameters. I've got a track here, which is a remix I've done of a song called Remedy by Joe Whitby, which I thoroughly recommend listening to. I've put some automation on the drum track. A send here to a track called Quaver Echo, another send to a track called Big Verb, and I've got two effect parameter automation tracks here on the drum track. Firstly, the Quaver Echo is a send to this Quaver Echo track here. Now, Quaver Echo has nothing on it. There's nothing recorded on it. There's no MIDI information on it. All it is is an echo effect in one-eighth notes, quavers. There's no dry signal going through. All it does is play back the echoes of anything that's sent to it. So I can send the output from a number of different tracks in the song to the same echo effect, which means if I decided I, I wanted to have crotch echoes or semi-quaver echoes, I could just change this track and it would change all the echo effects in the entire music piece. Big verb is, is a similar thing, but instead of an echo, it's got a large reverb, which again has an entirely wet signal coming out of it. Any of the dry signal comes through the drum track itself. The part of the song I'm going to show you is a breakout section, so I want something interesting to happen on the drums here. You can see these red lines here are controlling how much of the signal is sent to the quaver echo track that I've just shown you. To start with, nothing is going to the echo, so there's no echo happening. And in this section, you get quite a lot of the signal sent to the echo. It gradually reduces what it's sending, and then goes back to nothing again. The same for the big verb. When this section starts, I'm going to get a big crash of reverb. Then there'll be no reverb being sent after this section. These second two automation tracks are a bit more interesting. You can see they're both, say, band pass. On this drum track, I have a band pass filter, which is filtering out parts of the signal. At this point here, before the beginning of the breakout section, you can see it's almost a full spectrum is being allowed through. I'm just rolling off some of the bass end. But you can see from the lines here that the band width is going to be changed and the centre frequency is going to be changed. The centre frequency is actually going to be moving through the section. If I drag the playhead through this and you look at the bandpass filter, you'll see as I come to this section here, the band width has been reduced, and as I move through it, you will see that the centre frequency is changing. And as I come out of the end, the band width will increase again, and the centre frequency will go back to the middle. That's how it looks. How does it sound? And as this comes here, you'll hear a big crash and an echo start. And you can hear everything's gone really thin. There's a sweep going through here. I'll play that again without me talking over the top. that's the kind of thing you can do with automation and you can automate any parameter of any effect. You can automate parameters in virtual synths, you can automate pan, volume, you can automate just about everything which means you don't just get creative when you're playing, you can also get creative in the automation. Thanks for listening.